In today's episode, we meet some agents of ill intent, a handful of people who choose violence, an old man with a nasty habit, and the first of our heroes. This is Pages and Pixels, exploring Middle-earth through the Lord of the Rings Online. Episode 1. The Fall of Skorgrim. When the Lord of the Rings Online launched, the adventure centered around an epic story, Shadows of Angmar. We'll be following this story and letting it guide our exploration of the world. Our worst fears have come to pass. The One Ring has revealed itself, and as the Fellowship prepares for its perilous journey to Mount Doom, the shadow of Sauron stretches forth to reclaim it. In ages long past, the Witch King gathered a dark army in Angmar. Once again, he calls a vast horde from the depths of Kandum to march upon the lands of Middle-earth and lay them to rest. Aragorn and I hoped the rangers alone could hold back the Witch King's advance, and that Angmar's strength had not yet grown too great. We were wrong. of Eriador, and inspire them to stand against Sauron. For if you do not oppose the army of Angmar, then all the lands of Middle-earth will fall forever into darkness and shadow. War is at hand. The time is now. Who are we going to be in this world? We have a lot of choices, even more now than were available back in 2007. But in the interest of getting to the good stuff quickly, we're going to skip the tedium of character creation. I've chosen four heroes for us to follow. Each is a member of one of the four original races, elves, dwarves, hobbits, and men. Each also belongs to a class that fills one of the four basic MMO roles, healer, tank, damage, and support. This is Alice Gale, an elf hunter and the first hero through whose eyes we will see Middle-earth. The kindred of the elves dwell among the woods and dells, lingering in Middle-earth out of love for the land. Though their elder glory is diminished, and the day draws near when they must cross the sea, those who remain continue the ancient struggle against the shadow of the enemy. The hunter is a master of field and forest, unmatched with the bow, she uses her survival skills to guide her companions and lay traps for her enemies. The hunter is at her strongest when attacking from a distance, but is able to defend herself in melee at need. We begin several hundred years before the War of the Ring, in the arid Nuin. The Blue Mountains in the far west of Middle-earth were the home of Thorin's people in exile before the retaking of Erebor, a lonely mountain. The mountains also bordered Linden, the elf kingdom of Círdan the Shipwright, and the site of the Grey Havens. No surprise, then, that it was a place where elves and dwarves mixed, not always peacefully. While visiting the refuge of Athelion under the care of your master, you find yourself in the midst of a brutal attack by greedy dwarves of the Dowerhand family. Their king, Skorgrim, thirsts for power with an unnatural lust, and you are in the eye of the storm. There you are, Alice Gale. Come, quickly. Welcome to Middle-earth. We arrive in one of the rooms of the Athelian Library. Already we get a sense of the world from the architecture and the furnishings. The rooms are wood and plaster, 
wainscoting decorated with stylized trees and waves. In decoration, the elves prefer curves to straight lines, imitating the twining of vines or the shapes of other living things. The tapestries show seven stars, an important symbol to the elves who revered Elbereth, the star kindler. The stars are drawn from the constellation Valakirkla. Men called it the Wain, and Tolkien identified it as the Big Dipper. We also see ships sailing, an important symbol in the life of any elf in Middle-earth, representing their final journey to Valinor in the west, but especially important to those living in Linden, so close to the Grey Havens. Other tapestries show dragons, which play a big part in Middle-earth history, and a white tree in front of a mountain, surmounted by nine stars. The white tree is usually a symbol of Gondor, often shown with seven stars above it. I don't know why this one has nine. It might just be a pretty picture that the game artists liked. A few words now about the game and game mechanics to explain what you see on the screen. In the upper left is Alice Gale's portrait, along with her morale and power meters. You can think of morale as being life, but with one important difference. In the Lord of the Rings books, a great deal is made about the power of hope and dread. In the Lord of the Rings Online, these things are part of the game mechanics. Proximity to certain characters and objects may raise or lower hope and have a corresponding effect on morale. In the game, we are never killed. Our life never truly comes to an end. Instead, we are defeated. Our morale is sapped by injury and fear until we're forced to flee and reappear at resurrection spawn points in various places in the game. In the upper right is our map with our hope indicator. Beneath it is a list that tells us at a glance what quests we have accepted. Last, along the bottom, is a control panel of sorts. On it, we have our skills, and beneath it, we have our experience meter, telling us what level we are and how far we have to go before we reach the next one. But let's come back to the world. Ahead of us is Elrond Half-Elven, an important figure in the books. He's usually only present in Rivendell, but he was the herald of Gil-galad, the elven king of Linden in the Second Age so it's quite possible that when he traveled abroad, this would be one of his most frequent destinations. Tolkien tends to describe his characters more in terms of impressions than in terms of physical characteristics. In Lord of the Rings, he describes Elrond when Frodo sees him for the first time at the feast in Rivendell. The face of Elrond was ageless, neither old nor young. His hair was dark as the shadows of twilight. His eyes were gray as a clear evening and in them was a light like the light of stars. That's as close as we get to a physical description, and this interpretation of Elrond fits well enough with that. Hugo Weaving's portrayal in The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit movies also match the physical description, but I found his demeanor rather harsh for this character. He's an angry elf. The ring above Elrond's head indicates that he has a quest for us. That it's a flaming ring indicates that this quest is part of the Shadows of Angmar storyline. You cannot tarry here any longer. Skorgrim's forces are upon us, and I fear they make straight for this library. He seeks the relics of Athelion, though I do not know what a dwarf could want with them. These relics were once coveted by a gaunt lord of old. I think the fool believes he can become immortal if he acquires them. And now we are asked to pick up the satchel at his feet and equip the weapons that we find in it. Good. You are better armed. Your master Telegon wishes to see you before you venture out into the fray. But do hurry. This place is not safe for you. Telegon, I have found you a student. Quickly, say what you wish to say. Alice Gale is not safe here for long. Alice Gale, my dear student, I wish I could let you stay within these walls, but Elrond tells me that Skorgrim makes straight for this library. You must survive the battle outside, I'm afraid. 
I worry for you. Do it with me one last time, my friend, and show me that you're ready. It will ease my heart. Let us see how well you have learned. Well done, Alasgail. You've learned well. I Gorgrim's forces draw near. It seems they will do anything to get those relics. There is no time to waste. Alice Gale, go outside with Taligan and see what can be done to stop Gorgrim's from advancing. The Dower Hands cannot be allowed to take the Gaunt Lord's relics. I have vowed to keep them safe. I will hide the relics, then I will join you and Taligan in protecting the library. Be safe, young hunter. Go, Taligan. Take a last gale out of here. I must hide the relics before Scorgrim appears to claim them. Alice Gale, hurry, we have little time. Outside we get our first look at the refuge of Athelion. Our first look at the game artist's interpretation of Elvish architecture. Although it's spoiled somewhat by being on fire. The buildings have narrow bases and several stories, almost tree-like in their approach here. Arched doors and windows are the norm, while most decorations consist of fine, curved linework. Even the bridge ahead of us is curved. I think Tolkien would approve as it indicates a preference for the decorative over the merely functional, which I think fits well with his description of Elvish culture. Go, Alaskale. This is where the storm will converge. Ethelben is down below. He will let you through the gate to protect what is left of this refuge. Come, this way. I must defend the library against Gorgrim. Go, Alaskale, and promise me you will return in one piece. Ethelben shall open the gate for you. Keep hope alive, friend. We shall carry Curse this day. our hands and our lord, Scorgrim. Come, Alice Gale, quickly! Gorgrim's forces press hard upon us. Whoops, a bit of lag there. Ethelben decides to put on a burst of speed. That gate will not hold long. We must get into the courtyard and bolster our defenses there. Beyond the gate, though it's hard to see, you can see our first dwarves and our very first troll. Come, this way, young one. You should continue west, up the stairs. The relics are ours. The relics are ours. The relics are ours. Come to me, blade elf. Stay back, dower hand. Come to me, blade elf. Can ah, I it's Taligan's young charge. I will open the gate for you, Alice Gale. Quick! Come in! Alas, that it is not over yet. This way! Gorgrim has not shown himself yet. We've lost much in our battle with the Dower Hands. Tell me, though, what news do you bring? Leave me be! This poor spirit's life hangs by a thread. I fear for Athelion. How much more can we withstand? And I hear that Scorgrim has not even shown himself yet. 
which means the worst is yet to come. Thoranger! Thoranger! They've broken Beware. through! The Come, Alice Gale, the final battle pushes. is at hand. This way, the relics are ours. Prepare yourself. The gate will not hold long. <laughs> if we look in the upper left, we can see that Alas Gale has acquired a couple of status effects. We have a miniature boot icon indicating that she's rooted, she's unable to move. And we have a miniature flaming eye icon indicating that she is suffering some dread, which can be reflected as well in the morale meter above. Ah, uh, Elbereth! Ethelin Christ! Fall, beast! Thoranger, come! Talagan alone defends the library. He sent me to save Alice Gale. Come, young one. Talagan! Stand aside, elf. The relics are mine. Never. Oh, Talagan. What is he doing? Stop him! Talagan, no! Be at peace, Talagan Silvertongue. This is a sad day. I wish I'd returned a few moments earlier. Talagan wished for you to be safe, Alice Gale. And the relics are now buried with him. Is alas, alas, Gale. You've lost your beloved master. You may blame me for his death. I could have saved him, but he bade me go to you instead. Talagan was brave to spare your young life. Athelion is ruined now. Talagan was not the only elf to die today. Skolkrim will trouble us no more, and the relics are safely buried. But it was such a needless battle. Athelion will fade. The old refuge of Athelion lies abandoned. A ruined testament to the greed of Skorgrim Dowerham. Six hundred years after its fall, dwarves inhabit the ancient halls in the mountains, and Elrond of Rivendell, sensing a threat, has sent his sons Elrohir and Eladan, along with a company of elves, to investigate. So our adventure in Middle-earth begins, with greed once again leading to a dwarf's downfall and adding to the sorrows of the elves. Next time on Pages and Pixels, we jump ahead in time to watch as a band of dwarves ready themselves for what will prove to be a long and eventful trip. We'll meet a new hero and watch as old secrets are brought to light, to the detriment of all. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, and leave suggestions, thoughts, and constructive criticisms in the comments below. Be polite and respectful, because the world needs more of those things.